hello and welcome back, Thrivers. Welcome to our hotel room in Tulum, <laughs> if you're on YouTube. That's why we have slumber party vibes right now. Um, we are so fucking excited because we have Mommy. Uh, she's a redhead. She is super talented. She's queen of the elopement industry. And um, she loves Twilight more than the average millennial. <laughs> I uh, I said something like that on Instagram to hint about our guest, and you guessed that it was Don Jarvis, and you were right. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> Don is an elopement photographer based out of Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, and she believes that it's possible to build a badass business without getting caught in comparison. And we can both tell you that she lives that mission. It isn't bullshit. Not at all. We have really appreciated her friendship and education through the years. We're so excited to talk to her. She's waiting in the Zoom waiting room right now. So let's let her in. Let's get into it. <laughs> mm. I'm Devin. I'm Shay. We're two wildly different women who took separate paths to building thriving creative businesses built on laid back lifestyles, quality storytelling, inclusivity, and elevated client experience. We work when we want to, we have freedom when we need it, and friend, we want the same for you. We know that thriving looks and feels differently for everyone. And it's time to figure out what it means for you. You deserve a life that you love, not just tolerate. You are creative. You are powerful. You are worthy. You are a thriver. Hey, Thriver. We're happy you're here. Ah, there we go. So many buttons. Hey! Oh my God, you guys are together. You guys are burnt. Oh, I think we just look burnt in here because we're actually not burnt. I'm a little you guys burnt. look so burnt. You're burnt, for sure. <laughs> but this is like... Because when I first popped over, I was like, wow, we look red in this camera. You're yeah. So red. That's showbiz. I'm definitely not, though. I do have some gnarly bug bites. Oh, I bet. Oh, my gosh. You, you look good, though. Home, right? What? You look good, though. Oh, thank you. I have like four lights on my face. <laughs> we have a window. I, my office is like a dungeon. Like I have one can light, and so I have like a super tall light, a bunch like all, just lights everywhere. It's the only way. I'm just like kind of blinded though. <laughs> I love it. Um, thanks for coming today. Yeah, I'm excited. I honestly totally forgot about it, and then I got the email, so I was like, podcast, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah, that's what we like to hear. That's what we like to hear. Um, oh, I yeah. kind of told you this. There's no specific question list. We just I know. You just freaked me out with that one. <laughs> You're fine. Oh. You can eat, breathe, sleep, everything we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, we just wanted to be like a friend chat. And we're not even going to make you introduce yourself awkwardly because we just did that for you. Oh, oh sick. Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, everybody knew. We kind of teased who our next guest was. And everybody was like, done, 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 done. <laughs> What did you guys use to tease me? Like, what did you say? I said that- Should we wait to make her listen to the intro to this? Yeah, no spoilers. I feel like we can't spoil. <laughs> okay, okay, I can wait, I can wait. We'll make her listen to it, cause she'll laugh pretty hard and then I can't wait for that text later. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably gonna be like, you fuckers. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> or you'll be like, hit the nail on the head. <laughs> yep, that too. <laughs> Still gonna say you fuckers. <laughs> I get that. Perfect. Um, cool. So basically, we've already started. <laughs> Let's go. So, Don, we have brought you here today. We were thinking, like, what's spicy? What is juicy? What do people want to know from Don that she doesn't already talk about all the time? And we came up with outsourcing. Because it's the thing that everyone is so fucking intimidated by, but they should probably be doing in yeah. some way, shape, or form. And we feel like you do a good job, but you also have some, like, missteps that you can mm -hmm. talk about how you got through them, too. Yeah, 
hundred percent. Yeah. I can just dive right into it if you guys want me to. Uh, I think like, think about when, before you were outsourcing, like tell us maybe like, how are you were feeling and how you really decided to outsource? Yeah. Like, I mean, I think we all remember like our first time outsourcing was so intimidating and then getting on that first call to kind of like interview the person that you're going to outsource to and they're kind of interviewing you and it's like such an awkward process so kind of take us through that 100 so first off i just don't do well in the interview process or even the thought of someone else like being a part of my business like i feel like it's so weird because like when we work a different job that's not like this or we're our own owner business owner with like that whole thing like you have coworkers, you do have to hire on, or you get to work with new people all the time. And like, it's just normal. And you normally like pass off jobs to other people. Then when you get to this job life, it's like, oh, I'm going to do everything by myself and it's going to be awesome. And I can do it. And that's why I'm doing this job so I can do it all by myself. And I think for me, I just like, I really realized that I couldn't do it all. And that I was definitely lacking in so many parts of my business. Like I, and I'm very much like a full throttle in one lane at a time kind of a person. So like, I'm either full throttle elopements or I'm full throttle seniors or full throttle base camp. Like I don't do all of them. Like I can't, I can't. And then I have to be full throttle wife and mom too. So like, that's a whole other side of that where like something falls and it's like a really hard thing for me to admit that I'm failing at one of them or I'm struggling at one of them or something. And so it's like, a huge like weight off of me to then open up to outsourcing, except for I'm a control freak. So going into that whole avenue is like the most terrifying thing. Honestly, the only way I was able to actually ever like achieve that mindset and go for it is because my friends who do outsource basically told me like, you're an idiot. If you don't do this, like you're actually going to crush your business and like, you're going to hurt yourself with your family. Like it's going to affect you guys if you don't start doing this. And I was like, honestly, I needed that tough love. Like I needed that. And that's kind of where I started. I like needed someone else who did it to be like, you're being a dummy, go do this, you know? <laughs> I oh, yeah. went there because we've actually talked about this before because you just got diagnosed with ADHD, didn't you? Yes, yes. It's hard to explain that it's not just like squirrel getting distracted all the time, but like wanting to do a ton of things, but being super focused on just one at a time and how that affects the other areas of your life. Yep. And I just, I totally resonate with everything you just said. And I think listeners will too. It's weird though, because like, I think COVID and TikTok kind of like set me to like learn about women with ADHD, especially because a lot of women with ADHD don't respond in the same way that like men do. Like I wasn't the class clown in school. I was actually a really good student. Like I... I grew up bilingual. Like I was able to learn quite a few things and like actually focus. I was graduated with a really high GPA. I went to college. I succeeded in college. Like I've made my own business. Like, but there was still always this like lingering of like, why can't I get tasks done on time? Why do I procrastinate everything? Why can't I focus? Like, but I would force myself to work like 80 hour weeks so I could get it done. Or like tests in school were harder for me. So a lot of the classes I took, the hardest classes I took in college were my summer classes because they were smaller, easy, like more group chatty classes. But in like the normal terms of college, it would have been like a big 400 person class, but like summer it was easier. So like I purposely like took classes certain times of the year to make me, to make my brain work with it better. Or like, for example, with our jobs, like I purposely do like batch work because that's how my brain works better. And like, but I never understood that that meant that there could be something like that could have helped me like finding out that I had ADHD and like taking medication for that. And I was also a chicken and shit and I didn't want to take medication when I was pregnant. And so I was like, when I'm done having babies is when I'm going to actually like learn what the heck is going on with my brain and see if I can find a way to help make me more efficient, I guess, or like make my brain work a little bit better. Thank you for sharing that. I, yeah. you're so open about it. And I just know there's so many people that are scared to talk about needing help and talk about getting medicated too. Um, and I, it was scary. Like, I'm not like, I don't even take like Advil, like when I have a headache, like that's not for me. I'm more of like, <laughs> go eat some ice cream and go take a nap kind of a girl. So like, it was really weird to like adjust to this, but it's, I've definitely noticed a huge like gain in the way I work and the way I function with my family too, not being such a scatterbrain with them as well. So it's been awesome for like what works for me, but it's definitely been a process to get there. But I don't know. I just think like coming back, I guess, to like the outsourcing side of things, like when I actually like jumped into outsourcing, I just, 
I just dipped my toes in it a little bit where I actually really just started. This is so lame, but I actually just started with like, like grocery delivery and like doing home chef. And I was like, that's outsourcing. Like I don't have time to plan meals and cook and do this whole thing. So like, we're going to do HelloFresh or home chef and we're going to do like grocery delivery because I don't have time to go to the store and walk every aisle and get the things we need. I don't have time to like prep a meal, this whole thing. And so that was like dipping my toes into it. And then it was like, okay, now I'm going to try to find a VA who can help me with like not all my emails, but like some of them and like maybe like organizing my inbox, organizing my CRM, like little, little bits to kind of get there. (laughs) Do you feel like, um, okay, before I go there, um, when you were dipping your toe in, what was it like, like those first couple times of like learning to work with someone and manage somebody? Cause I'm sure that was a learning curve. So hard. I've been like outsourcing, like attempting to like get to the point where I'm like really outsourcing like a lot of my business. I think now I'm at that point, but I'm like eight years into being full time. So I probably should have started at the first year. I don't think I started until like probably year two or three, four or something like that. But I, I did not delegate enough. I also was not, um, what's the right word for this? Like, uh, I don't know. I didn't like speak my mind enough. I like let my VAs kind of like I let them walk all over me, honestly. Like I became their friend and I told them like, oh, it's fine. Like, that's fine. That's how you do it. Like, that's that's fine. Like I didn't like hold my ground and be like, I need to do it this way. This is how it needs to be done. I'm paying you. That's what's happening. Like in a nicer way, obviously. But like, (laughs) it's really hard to go from like, hey, like, can you work with me and be a part of this really personal artistic business? But I need you to be business-minded, but I need you to do it like, like me. And then like teach them how to be like me. But then also- it's such a weird concept like it's really hard totally it is really hard especially when you're super personable and I always try to think about this too like clients come to us and we're so busy serving our clients that when we have to hire something I feel like we almost like can't switch into boss mode we're like serving the people who are supposed to be serving us literally I know and nobody talks about too that like sometimes you outsource um Like you start outsourcing with someone and they're doing a really good job, but then your business starts to take off and they just can't keep up with it either. And it's okay to ebb and flow and be like, great, you really served me for this part of this period of time in my business. But now I need someone who's like a little bit of higher level for like where my business is going now. And that can feel like you're like burning them, but really you're just like, you were great, but now I just need something different. And like having that conversation is weird. And like firing someone. Like, yeah, and like letting them go. Finally. <laughs> Literally what you just said is everything though. Like knowing when you have to transition away from someone that you are working with to someone who can handle a higher capacity, that is also a really hard thing. Cause you also have to realize for yourself, like I am at a higher capacity. I do need someone who's maybe more evolved in the business, like has, a, has different strengths that you don't have so that they can help you get to even a higher capacity, like all these things. But I don't know. I've been burned by quite a few VAs, so I'm still not using a VA. There was a lot of times where they would say they were doing certain things for me and they weren't. And then I started paying them for hours that nothing was happening. And that went on for months because I'm too trusting and too kind. So like I've been just burned really, really bad with that. And it's always because I've turned my VAs into my friends and it's I've let them become my friend. I've let them into my life too much. And then I become too comfortable and I get too scared to be like, hi, are you doing the job that you say you're doing? Because at that point we're friends. Like I can't say that anymore because I'm going to hurt their feelings and then I feel bad and then I'm a bad person. But in reality, they're taking advantage of me and I'm letting them. Yeah, I think it's also hard too when you're outsourcing something. Like it's hard to micromanage your outsourcer. You're like, I'm outsourcing this so I don't have to. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like micromanage this. So when they're your friend... When you turn them into your friend, I'm sure you're feeling like, I don't want to micromanage you, but like nothing's getting done. Well, literally, or like, and I'm like a super empathetic person. So like, I get really apologetic for things I don't need to be. So like, for example, when I first started outsourcing blogging, it was to one of my best friends. I paid her $15 a blog post to write the 300 words, right? I would send her a pick time gallery and then I would Marco Polo her an audio about like what the gallery was like and what the session was like so that she could write me the 300 words for the blog post. And she did great. She really did. But she doesn't understand like blogging or keywords or SEO. So I was like, hey, can you try like 
pinpoint these words, you know, talk about this a little. And she did a great job. She knew how to talk like me. It was great. But anytime she didn't do a great job, I just like, you did a great job. And I would just like rewrite it myself, still pay her and put it up line so that she never knew how to get better working with me. But also I wasn't communicating anything. And I never had to fire her. I just ended up hiring like a new blogger because it didn't matter. Like she was like just helping me, but like it, it was such a weird thing. I was like, why don't I tell you that you're not doing it the way I need you to? Like, you're my best friend. Like you wouldn't care, but I just, for some reason can't do that. Cause I feel bad. I'm just going to tell you you're amazing. Cause you're my best friend. <laughs> like, yeah. We always, every single podcast, I'm pretty sure we say the phrase clarity is kindness. And I think that is something you come to after doing the opposite, right? Yep. After like trying to be too nice and like, we keep saying nice as if nice isn't a good thing, but it's actually not nice to like leave someone in the dark about the job they're doing because then they're blindsided when they get let go. Right. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. We're really bad about voicing that stuff, but I don't know. I am very grateful for like those bad experiences because it's taught me so much about like how I do need to communicate more, how I need to delegate more, how I how I can structure it so I don't have to micromanage them. Like, hey, if you want to work with me, this is how it needs to be. This is how I need to know what hours you're doing, what you're getting done, like how I need to pay you, all these things. And like, I expect this, this, and this from you, like setting expectations for both. Like, what do you need from me to be a better boss? What do you, what do I need from you to work for me? You know? And now I feel like I have a really good system and a really good like way about working with people and like keeping friendships as friendships and keeping work as work. Um, I still do work with friends, but I separate it really well to like have it like, for example, I use Slack to communicate with anyone I work with. So if I'm talking to you about work, we're talking about it in Slack. If we're texting about what movie we're going to see this weekend, we're texting about it. Like those are very separate. We never text about work. We don't talk about when we hang out unless it's like a need to thing or we plan to do that, but try really hard to separate like business and work kind of a thing. I think that's so smart. Um, so now that you've found your groove with communication and with making sure everything is really separate what are a couple little nuggets or tips you would give to someone listening to this podcast for how they can set it up and feel confident about outsourcing and then also uh, feel good when that relationship has run its course I'm gonna take that a step further actually and how do you even find someone mm. ah, that's so hard okay Okay, let's start with the find someone. Let's and start with the find someone, with then how to communicate with them, and yes. then how to let them go. And don't feel yeah. like this is just casual too. Like I know, I know. Like we're just, we're asking you as friends. Tell us how to. Yeah, do tell me. <laughs> I'm just telling you guys. So I feel like when I've found the right people, it's always been through other friends of mine who do outsource mm, to people who worked really well for them. So like I typically reach out to my friends who are at the capacity where they are outsourcing a lot, and I know that they are. Or I'll post it on my stories, be like, hey. Who of my friends is outsourcing? Can we chat? And like, they'll come in my DMs and be like, hey, I'm outsourcing this, this, and this. I'm like, cool. Do you like your people? And they're like, eh. you know, or they're like, hell yes. Yeah. So it really depends. And like, I ask them, like, are you in the stage where like, you think they want to work with more people? Do you like what you're doing with them? Do you want to continue working with them? Like, how has it been with like communication and like constructive criticism? Like, that's like stuff I need to know if I'm going to work with somebody. Like, but that's typically how I found people is through other friends who hire out and like how they have, fun. it's just kind of like getting them through friends. It's kind of a sad way to do it. Cause it's hard to find them that way. Unless you have friends who are like fully at like the outsourcing capacity, but yeah, I feel like that's been like the biggest thing to find them. And then what was the second question? I forgot. Um, now that's when you're actually like setting them up for success, what does that look like? Yes. Um, so I feel like a lot of that starts with just like the interview kind of process to like work with them and just like, I, I kind of said it earlier, but like really just like knowing and coming to whatever meetings you have with like an expectation for how you want to be as a boss and what you need from them to help you run your business. So like really setting that up is like, these are the tasks I need to get done. Like, this is like how I want you to get them done. And then like, what, like, what do you think you can provide for me now in that way to like be a unique person to my team? Um, and if they can align with that, like taskless in a sense. Like, I feel like that's always really helped is like, you have to like do some serious, like mindset preparation for this. You can't just like walk into a meeting and be like, I think I'm going to hire this VA. Like, I don't know. She seems cool on Instagram. Like that's not going to work. Like you're just, it's going to fail. So like, cause they can have a very aesthetic Instagram. They can type real good. But if you guys don't hit it off on the call, like with all the game plan, then it's just not going to like, nothing's going to happen from there. 
Mm, I love that. Mm -hmm. And then um, say the meeting goes great. You have a strong feeling about the person. You want to hire them. Um, From there, do you... Are you structuring how you want their workflow to go or are they leading you through their process? I'm open to either because if they have a really good system for what they're doing and it actually works really well and I don't have a system, that's why I'm hiring out. They might be the right person to take it on and be like, Hey, this is actually how I do things. I think it'll work really well for you. And I mean, they'll be doing it, but like they kind of explain that to me. Or if I'm, that's especially for like blogging and stuff. Cause I don't blog. I don't do Pinterest. Like I have teams that do that. So I, I'm not going to come in and tell them how to do their job, but I am going to tell them what's important to me. For example, with blogging, I'm like, I, I want these keywords really pushed. I want these types of blog posts pushed. I want these types of galleries pushed to benefit my business. And they will work with me to like push that so I can have that traction for my job. Um, but otherwise, like, I think that's the only time I really try to give my opinion when it's their job that they're really good at. I just kind of tell them what the outcome I want and like, how can we achieve that with the best workflow for both of us? Sometimes our business just moves on. If someone just isn't working for your business period, and it's not like you have to let someone go because you're evolving. If they're just not working, how do you communicate with that? And how long do you stick it out? Because for me, I know for myself, I'm like, okay, I want to give someone like at least three months and some things have long game strategies. So then I'm like, maybe I need to give them like six months. Maybe I need to give them a year. And then after a year, I'm like, maybe I should have let them go sooner. But (laughs) like, what is that process? Or it, it might be different for every type of outsourcing, but like, what does that look like for you? I think I'm at the point where I like, I haven't had to let go of anybody I'm obsessed with that's working for me right now. Um, The only people I have let go of are the people that I should have let go of differently. Like I did not have a good experience letting them go. Like with the VAs who were kind of taking advantage of me, I like did not know how to end that correctly. And so like, you know, I think with one of them, I feel like I did a decent job, but like we were both local. We were friends. Our families are friends. So like she came over to my house and I had like my notes and it was so awkward and she cried. And it was literally the most worst thing ever. But I also know that she did some really bad things to my business. So like, I was also really mad at her. So I was like, I felt horrible. She cried, but I was also like, this has to end. Like I have to hold my ground. Like I can't continue working with this person. And it was a really hard thing for me to go through. So that was really hard. And I think that was like the last time I like really like fired somebody. And then I guess the other time I did have somebody doing like ads for me for a little bit, but I never communicated enough when we were working together that I was like, not like happy with how things were going. I just kind of stayed quiet. And then I just like up and decided to fire this person. And like, I knew that I wanted to, but I didn't give this person any notice. And so like, I kind of probably like threw them for left field, however you say that saying, whatever. So like, I know that that was like a really, again, a poor way to do it, but the only other person I think I've like let go of, but I, but I always come back to this person is my blogger. I always think I'm like, I, cause I love her. She's phenomenal. I'll have her blog for me for like a year. And I'm like, cool. I think I got this. Like I can blog for a little bit or it's like a slow season. I'm like, I'm going to blog for three months. <laughs> I'll do this so shit too. I've done this to her twice. I have let go of her twice. And then I am always like within like two months, I'm like, hi, I miss you. Can you come back to me? I haven't blogged once and you probably knew this was going to happen. And <laughs> And it's always me thinking that I can just like save a couple bucks and like, I can try it on my own. Like I know how to blog. I know what to do. I'm not like, I understand that part of my business. I just don't have the time for it. And for whatever reason, I thought that I would have time for it both of these times. And I don't know why I didn't learn from it for the first time, but I have always come back to her. And now I'm like, don't let me let you go anymore. Stop letting me do this. Tell me I'm an idiot and tell me that I need you because I won't do it. So yeah. You know what I think is so beautiful about the examples you just gave, Don, that I think was actually legitimately super valuable for the listeners is the ownership. Oh. Like, I fucking love when something happens in the business or life that isn't desirable and you're like, here's what I could have done better. I wish I had more candor. I wish I could communicate yeah. better instead of being like, well, this person did this, this, and this, and that's why I let her go. You know, like, I think that's how you actually grow and move on and make more money in the business is extreme ownership in literally every single area. So I hope listeners picked up on that and are actually looking inward about how they can communicate better 
and like look for what they did wrong in every situation. I love that you just did that. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I feel like it's such a two way street. Like if they are not doing their job, but have you told them that they're not doing their job? And so like, yeah, that's like such yeah. a huge part of it is like, if you're not communicating it, then they can't be better. And like with the person that I did, um, like kind of fire, like randomly, like I also just kind of fired with like an excuse on my end and didn't say like, these are the things that I didn't like receive from you that I wish that I had. Like, I just kind of was like, I need to fire you. Cause I have, I can't, I can't afford it. I just, you know, like whatever, like I just made up a lie because I felt horrible about it. And cause I knew that I was in the wrong for not communicating through our time together. And so like, I just, yeah, it was, I felt horrible about it. It sucked. I get that. Um, yeah and relatable. My last tip is if people need help firing, um, just anybody on the pod, if you need help to say that, you know, help anybody go. I did come from a corporate background. I did have to let a lot of people go. So let me know and I can help you craft up a really nice email. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at that. Do you guys outsource at all? Yes. What so do you I have? also outsource. Yes, we do, John. Yes. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, for those of you who don't know, Don, I also outsourced and hired Don for a year of coaching. Um, I think that was like, I guess it's been maybe six months since then, but I did it for a whole year and it was awesome and it was the best money I've ever spent, um, I have to say. So there's your plug. Yay. Um, <laughs> but you encouraged me to outsource and I took that to heart and I um, contemplated hiring a VA and I never actually also got to the point of hiring a VA because I do feel like sometimes I don't exactly know what they do. Um, when I get on a call, like if any VAs out there are listening, if you could just be a little bit clearer for all of us because I would like more help. I just don't know exactly what you can do for me. Um, VAs confuse me because they always say that they're a VA but then they do social media management. I'm like, that to me, a VA is in the email on the CRM. Yeah, like I need like some back end stuff, but like also maybe if there's a VA that does HoneyBook because I haven't seen that yet. Like, is there a VA that like, or maybe it specializes in Dubsado for you, specializes in her manager. Like, like, can I get a manager? VAs, hot take. You are in demand if you know how to work a CRM for small businesses. So I never got that, but um, I do outsource my blogging and Pinterest and I did outsource my social media for a little bit. Um, but I think that, um, I need to be the one doing my social media. That is something that is like a little bit harder. And then I outsource design work. So website and copywriting. Yep. Love it. What about you, Shay? I outsource blogging and Pinterest and uh, website design. I'm outsourcing my SEO right now and just random one-off tasks. Like if I need a media kit designed or like a PDF yeah. redone. Um, with my outsourcing, I do blogging with one person and then I have like a social media team kind of like I'm, I'm more of like a marketing team and they do all of my John Photo Education, Instagram, my Pinterest, my ads, my email marketing, my base camp course planning, course outlines, course presentation creating. And I do like all like the script and actually like recording and editing. And then when I get it up live for them, they do like the headline cover, like the cover, the description, the social media stories to match all the base camp emails, any launch plan, any product shop info, any sales page. And then I do also have a graphic designer who does all my website, all my branding, all my one-off tasks with like Hey, like we have like every month I have jobs for her to do, like update this guide or create this guide. or have a launch for this. I need this. Like she just has, I'm on, she's like basically on retainer now. Like it's just easier that way. But I think love that. love that. That's anything else. I still ask just all my food stuff, like home chef, that stuff. Is there anything else? Oh, and yeah, I've been doing editing. I used to use honest editors. Um, I really like them. So if you guys want like an actual person to edit for you, Honest Editors is actually phenomenal. They're a little more on the spendy size, but I've never been more impressed with a editing team and I have tried so many. Um, but I'm using Imagine AI right now and I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy. That's right. We just talked about that. Yeah. I, I've been like on the AI train lately for sure. Like AI helps edit this podcast, which is, it's actually like pretty solid. And then um, I've been using a lot of AI for like brainstorming outlines for 
getting social media posts for like helping refine some blog posts, which has been awesome. Um, a little chat GPT action. I literally have it open on my other screen right now. I love a chat GPT. <laughs> chat GPT, I thank you for freeing $20 a month. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. You actually like you set up the segue really, really well. Now we just have to take it home because um, what's always juicy and especially new photographers and videographers always want to know about, especially from you, I've been seeing you integrate it into Basecamp, your social media marketing for that quite a bit, is people just always want to hear about what you're doing on Instagram and TikTok. Um, <laughs> So in a what like I just post I don't know I hear you but like as far as outsourcing goes it looks like you're setting people up for success with a ton of prompts and like an actual plan for what to actually post can you just tell us a little bit about how that's been going what the feedback's been like with that well it's been freaking awesome so only base campers get to see that right now um well right now forever. Um, and so I create a social media weekly plan for them where I give it to them either Saturday or Sunday on the Facebook group and in my close friends and like close friends highlights. And I basically break it down where they have like a story plan, a post plan, and then either a video or like a video or Pinterest pin kind of a thing. So I try to break it down where like every day they're storing about something and they're staying consistent about storing something unique every single day of the week. I am pushing it because that is like so important to be consistent and then either like they post a feed post or they post a feed video of some sort. So some days like it's like skip IG posts and then it's like the video part, like create a video. I never give them like, this is what you should create it about because there's so many people and so many different niches and aesthetics and whatnot. So I want it to be like, you need to post your video today, do your hashtags, your keywords, make it connect with something that you're you know, proud of or want to connect with or that you're passionate about. And then I always post like tons of like trending audios and ideas with templates. I try to make it as easy as possible. I try to find all the template options that are fun to make with a trending audio, like attached to it on Instagram so that they can like quickly make it that day or the next day, like batch it, you know, prep it, all of that. And just try to make their lives so much easier. I give them keyword planning, hashtag planning, um, hook ideas for good reels, I literally spell out out for them. So it's pretty awesome. There's literally like 15 slides to this thing. <laughs> It's good. My close friend stories, like when you look at my stories on my end, it is insane how long every single day my story like little dots are. But then when I go to like one of my other accounts who doesn't get to see that and I like look to see like what my stories look like for someone who's not my close friends, I'm like, oh, there's like six little dots. But like base campers see like 45 dots. I it's insane. So good. So like what are students telling you about this? Like what are they saying? Like what are their like pain points and then what are you solving for them they're just skyrocketing their pain point is they have no accountability and like no understanding of like what to do when they show up to their phone that morning they're like uh like how am I supposed to show up today you know and that's terrifying like to not like what we do we walk into our office we have no one else in here and we are told to start our jobs for what like like, you know, like you, if you don't have like someone telling you like every day, this is what you have to get done. Like, what are you going to do that day? You're just going to procrastinate. You're going to edit it. Like maybe you're going to edit it for fun shoot. You just did or respond to some emails. Like, and then we might post on Instagram, but we might forget what time that we're like the most optimal or whatever. Like you might be like, Oh, I didn't really get ready today. So how do I show up without getting ready? Like maybe you don't ever get ready. Like, that's fine. Like, but like, how can you show up? But like, I just think that like having a laid out plan for people where they can like know how to show up at least in one avenue of their business that day, where it's like the part that can connect them with potential clients, which is social media. But I do also recommend they're like every Friday we blog. And then like, I recommend them to like push those blogs within those IG posts and reels. And like, we have a blog train on Monday in the Basecamp Facebook group. So like everyone can go comment on each other's blogs, and, like boost each other's SEO and support each other. So it's like a really fun way to like have the accountability that you have all week to plan your blog. You blog it on Friday and then Monday, if you haven't gotten it done yet, you can at least get it done by then. And then everyone else can go comment on it and like support you. But I think it's just a matter of getting people to have that accountability and to have like a plan. And then I like literally spell it out for them. I'm like, here, do this. Like, and the amount of people who are like, look at my, I like try to remind people to like screenshot their insights. Like when they kind of start with Basecamp or when they like kind of start to becoming more consistent, like they get excited about being consistent they'll like screenshot their insights and they, I've seen people go from like 
literally like nothing, like no engagement to like 700 times engagement. Like it's so cool to see that. And like, I have a lot of people who are like, I just booked my first destination elopement or like out of state elopement. And they're like, shitting their pants like freaking out dming me like they just just want my email they read my email this they scheduled a call like oh my god i'm like oh my god you know like it's so fun to see like how they went from just like maybe posting a couple like coffee pictures to then talking on a story or doing a selfie and like growing and like showing their personalities and then like obviously seeing it like grow and like create like actual engagement and then actual bookings is like the coolest thing ever uh, i i love that you just said that like right, tying yeah the action to an actual result that you can measure because the insights are sick like that's amazing especially as fuel to keep going and keep consistent being able to tie that to an actual booking like so cool that feels so good i love it and even if it's just people getting into your dms or commenting more on reels or posts and like knowing that these are possible potential clients like the amount of people who have like never even engaged with me until the day that they actually like are like hey i feel like your inquiry form like I've been following you for years. I love everything you do. I love everything you post. I'm like, literally our DMs are empty. Like we have nothing together. So I'm like the fact that like they have been watching, they have been noticing, like they know my favorite movies are Twilight. They know that I have two kids. Like they know these things as they see me talk about all the time, but they've never said anything. And like, I try to remind myself not to be discouraged by the fact that maybe some people aren't responding or engaging. They're watching and they're stoked and they're connecting with me just talking at them and they're not talking back, but they're connecting to me. And so like, I can't wait for the day that they do book me or they do reach out and like, Hey, we just got engaged. I've been wanting to book you since the day that I found you. Like, that's such a cool feeling. And like, I know that if that happens to me and I'm as consistent as I am, I know it's going to happen for base campers too. If they're just, if they just try and like show up consistently. That's so true. It's beautiful. Um, you lit up talking about that I know which makes me so excited um so I am so on board with base camp I love that you're doing it I love the subscription model um can we nerd out about base camp for five minutes is that okay always amazing base camp, a passion I'm here for it <laughs> um well first of all just a nerdy question what drew you to a subscription model in the first place um, I think I love coaching. I think coaching is amazing. It's actually my last round of coaching this season. I mean, unless Devin wants me to coach, I will always coach Devin, but <laughs> I am starting to realize that it's a lot easier for me to actually support. This sounds so weird. It's easier for me to support hundreds of photographers at the same time than one at a time. I get that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. All the constant feedback, like you always have a direction to orient like the next course and next thing yeah it's just a such a different model and like I don't know I just wanted something that like I wanted something that was really affordable because at the time when I launched Basecamp it was when education like sales in the industry were at like an all-time low for a lot of my education educator friends and we're all noticing that like these high ticket workshops high ticket pricing classes uh courses were like no go like people could not afford them and I'm like hey what can people afford? They can afford a couple Netflix subscription thingies. You know, we can afford Prime once a year. We can afford these like smaller subscription things. And that makes sense because it's like over time, it does become more expensive, but what you gain from it is still really affordable. And because it's, it does feel very one-on-one in Basecamp, but it's still, obviously it's not actually a one-on-one thing. Like I can be as one-on-one as I can try to be with like DMing, responding to the Facebook group, like responding to comments and courses, but like, that's the closest I can get to that, you know, or like doing my like live editing calls, but being able to just provide like education at a lower cost where people can anywhere from like beginner to like professional advanced photographers, they can all learn something and like help them skyrocket their business or like thrive in their own way. Like that is such a game changer, I feel like, and making it to where it is accessible for anyone to do that, whether they are a super high end professional photographer who also maybe can't afford a $4,000 workshop or even a $300 course. Like that still is expensive. Like I get it. So just trying to find a way to like narrow that down. But then like for me, of course, like as a business owner, yes, a ton of people paying for a really ex- like really inexpensive program does add up for me in a very lucrative way for myself. So like it does benefit my family and like myself a lot to have a subscription-based educational platform for my own like finances, of course. I, I mean, I got excited listening to you talk about the Instagram shit, all the prompts, 
But for you right now, like what courses in base camp are you the most excited about? Like what like gets you going? Ooh. What are the students really benefiting from? And do we get any spoilers about upcoming ones? Yes, um, I'm actually so excited. I actually had a videographer come film me for an entire day at the Oregon Coast last month. And she filmed me photographing a senior, like a college senior, a couple session and um, location scouting, like literally on site, never been to this area ever and like fully location scouted. And I wore a mic and everything. And she just mailed me back the hard drive with all the footage. Ah! <laughs> so excited because I'm like going to start working on creating like those courses now with like showing like how I shot, you know, the senior, the couple, how I mentally experience a location scouting like world kind of like what I was looking for what I was photographing for my location guides how I was seeing it for potential clients how I was filming BTS on my phone for reels and content like all the steps that I take and why I do that and how I utilize that and like I don't know I just think like hands-on courses like that where like you can't pay someone for a four thousand dollar mentorship to learn that in person now you can watch it in a hour and a half long 39 dollar course like that's so awesome like such a cool way to learn. I don't know. I'm excited. Y'all, that's so cool. I'm so that. excited. I'm so stoked for that. <laughs> I know. It's really good. And they're like really fun shoots. Like the senior was like, oh, I didn't know this, but she was a freaking dancer. So I'm like, why are you so good? Like, I don't have to pose you. Like, I wish you were like shittier so I could actually pose you for this course. Like, <laughs> she was so fun to work with. And I loved it. And it was pouring rain. Like she was just a trooper. It was so fun. And then I shot with a couple and like there, she's a photographer, her husband's like, you know, loves his wife, doesn't love photos. So it was like the perfect client. Cause she was like, you know, timid and he didn't really want to, he, he wanted to be there cause he like loves his wife, but he's like, I'm not really sure about photo shoots, you know? So like he handled it really well, especially having me and a videographer like following us around. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's good. Not, but it was like a typical client. What's that? Because it's not just you and the couple. You're like, by the way, I'm getting, I'm getting filmed, so you're getting. Filmed. Well, like, of course they were paid for this because they're like modeling for a course. So like, he was like, you know, we get paid. I'm like, he's like, I'm a model, and you know, like, oh, it was so <laughs> cute. It's really great, but like, they're not like a super touchy feely couple. They have kids, like, like you know, like they're not like this perfect cinematic run and spin me throw me in the air, you know, the notebook vibes. Like they were a very normal couple who doesn't understand like really like how to be with the camera sometimes or gets nervous in front of the camera like that and like they're not super like PDA so like how do we pose a couple like that and I cannot wait to show people like what how I was able to like learn them observe them and create photos for them not for my gain for their gain like for their photos for their memory their legacy and not like what I want them to look like for my social media or my content you know like how can I give them photos that will last them like, like awesome for their legacy? So like, I don't know. I'm excited to like show that. Cause that is a very common shoot that people are like, I just had a really shitty shoot. The couple didn't have PDA. They weren't kissing. They weren't touchy. They weren't running and spinning. I'm like, they don't have to be like, they can be themselves. They can be just walking on the beach and be together. And that can be such an intimate, powerful shot. You just have to be creative with it. There's your sound bite. You did it, baby. Yeah, that was no beautiful. <laughs> Done. Tell us how you're thriving right now. Uh, in base camp? <laughs> in, in, in all aspects. How are you thriving? Are you thriving? I think you are. I guess uh, you are, but. I'm, 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 I feel really good. I also, I'm like in a weird stage right now where I also feel like I am doing too many things and I don't feel like I'm su succeeding at all of them. So it's one of those moments where I also feel like I'm like failing, but I'm also like, but in other ways I'm like, but I am thriving and like other ways I am really proud of a lot of things like. I have skyrocketed past a very big goal for myself with base camp. My son just took 10 steps last night and I got, I got to see it. Like I wasn't in my office. Like, you know, my husband and I started bouldering together. So like we're doing more of like couples activities together. So we're thriving in that way. Um, I feel really good about a lot of things. Like this is the most bookings I've ever had with elopements in one year. So like, I'm really excited about this, but I also feel like I'm lacking in ways that I should be otherwise like I should be supporting more parts in business too but I'm always gonna feel like that I actually love that you said that because that was part two of the question is um when you're off track and you feel like you're not thriving how do you reorient I don't know I think I just for me like I have to kind of like write stuff out and be like what is important what needs to get done right now 
what am I distracting myself with and the things that I'm like excited about, but don't necessarily need to get done right now. So like that tends to happen too, when I'm like super passionate about something like for base camp right now, like I'm so full throttle base camp. And so it's hard to like focus on like maybe like other product launches or other things that are happening, like updating my client guides. Like, I don't really want to do that right now, but I know I need to, cause I have clients inquiring and they need things. And I'm like, I have to update all these guides, <laughs> you know, like I have so much to do or I have to like fix something on a website. And I'm like, I don't really want to do that. Like, so I'm like definitely struggling in certain things that need to get done. So I'm procrastinating them. So like, I feel like for me, I just need to like write out my priorities and write out my, what I want to do. And then let myself have a fun one after I finish a priority. Like, okay, like get the hard one done. Now you can have a fun one, get the hard one done. Now you can have a fun one kind of. Is it possible that you should outsource the hard ones? <laughs> I, I am. That's the problem. And so like, I feel like it's getting done to the best of that person's ability, but I, I have to take it to that. Tight it up at the end. Yeah. Or like, yeah. they're asking me for like feedback and I'm not responding fast enough. And I'm like, they're like six days later. And I'm like, oh, I still have not responded to our Slack. Oh my gosh. I suck. Like what the heck? And like, I get in my head where like, if something has to get done, I really don't want to do it right away. I um will purposely procrastinate, but then it makes me feel worse about it. Yeah done that like especially with like a gallery like a gallery you might not be as stoked to edit or like maybe you had like a weird something happened at that session and you just kind of like weren't as like connected to it or you just like totally just didn't get it done in time and then you get to the point where you're like oh my god it's done it's not going to get done in time and now you're like I just don't even want to do it instead of like getting it done like you just keep procrastinating making it worse for yourself that's 100% what I do it's really bad I love it I think that's super relatable and yeah. I think writing it down is great. We love a good dump list. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> Bring dumps are like my go-to for sure. For like every, <laughs> for every category of work. I wish that I had like just a huge whiteboard wall in my office so I could just brain dump all the time on there. Like that would just make me so happy. <laughs> okay, I, later after this, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you one and a calendar that I just found that are like jumbo. And I was like, listen, this might not be like as aesthetic and cute for an office, but this is the shit I need. I love it. <laughs> you please yeah, I'm going to. I'm like, this is the shit I need. Because like this works, but it's like, I fill it up. Like, well, and I got big ass handwriting. Worth a task. So but Like this was like yesterday's. Like this isn't one day. This is supposed to be Monday through Sunday. Like this was yesterday's. Like that's oh, not how this yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like my brain is like, I write big things. I write questions to myself. It just doesn't, I don't know. I need a jumbo. You need a big boy. I need a, I need a big boy. I need a tall boy. <laughs> a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> how can people find you? Where can people find you? And how can they join Basecamp? Okay. Um, you can find me on my Instagram, obviously. Dawn underscore photo. Super easy. Um, all my info for Basecamp is all linked to my Instagram. So honestly, just come there. Find me there. Hang out with me there. Say hi. Please say hi. If you listen to this DM, I would love for you to hop in my DMs and just like tell me if there's something that you learned about or something that you connected with or something you're like, no, Dawn, you are so wrong. Tell me. Like, I love that. Like, I want to hear it. So I'm just so excited to like connect to people. I will gladly send you a personal link to join Basecamp if you would like, or just hop into my uh, links in my bio and it's all right there. So thank you guys. This was so fun. I really did feel like I was just like hanging out with y'all. Good. Yeah, we good. hope so. Next um, time you can be here with us. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Why are you guys in Tulum? Tell me why you guys are there. Um, I work down here. I love it. And Shay, and Shay came with me and we extended our trip to do Thriver work. <laughs> That's honestly so smart. I know. So fun. I've been loving all your like photo shoots and like behind the scenes, like little like videos and pictures. It's so fucking cute. It's pretty nice here right now. I yeah. We leave. So I leave. I guess like at a normal time from the Cancun airport at eight, but we have to wake up at like three to get there tomorrow and get checked in. So this is our last, this is our last day of basking in the sun and meandering oh. around Tulum. You guys are awesome. Well, thanks for taking a podcast call with me while you guys are literally on vacation, basically. What the heck? No, we Thank this is what we wanted us. to be doing yes. um we wholeheartedly there's a camera behind sorry we wholeheartedly support base camp um i have a course in there for uh integrating video into your photography businesses you should absolutely check it out go mm -hmm. snag all of dawn's marketing materials mm -hmm. all of her prompts all of her templates um devin and i were joking in the very first episode of this podcast that we 
uh, just uh, we were raised by Mommy Dawn. Like, your stepmommy Dawn. We love you. <laughs> I love that like, Chris's mommy. It's great. Also, Devin has a course coming out in Basecamp soon too. We just yeah. finalized it. So both of like I got my Hey Thriver girls both in Basecamp. I'm so excited. What a big happy fam. So cute. <laughs> um thanks for it. coming on, Dawn. We love you. We love, love you guys. Thank you.